Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for part 2 of your uh, weekly Factorio update. And as ever we're playing Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 and version 0.6 of Space Exploration and we're sponsored by um, Tree4.be but more of them, more on them a bit later. So today we're going to have a bit of a look at what uh, Mike and Mark have been up to in the last in the last stream. So recently Mike has been building up a spaceport area here, which you can see the, the idea behind this is we have a series of rocket launch silos uh, with the cargo rockets in them, and these are all being fed by this belt here that brings in the rocket part the rocket parts for all of them. And I think we've got uh, looks like at the moment we've got uh, we're using just metal boxes with um, with a couple of uh, uh, capsules in them to 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 to, um, to bring to bring out the space capsules. But eventually we'll do this by uh, by, by blue chest. And the idea is that each of these each of these ro uh, silos will have a blue chest and a combinator feeding in to tell it to feed in all of the stuff that's needed on that particular planet. So, for example, we've got one here for Taisha Kuten, which is uh, has got all the bits and pieces I was talking about in in, uh, in an earlier episode where I said, oh, it looks like I need lots of belts out there. I'm going to need some pump jacks, some mineral water pump jacks, and some more pipes and so on. And I can have a look at the uh, the, the demands out in Taisha Kuten and go, actually, there's a few other things that are needed out there as well. So I should probably go in and add those to the to the list. But the idea is that when somebody wants to go out to Taisha Kuten for any reason, they can go, they can come along here, get in this rocket, and it'll already have all of the stuff that we've reckoned is needed out there. And they can then load it with any additional miscellaneous as well. So, for example, there's also there's also a few uh, raw imosite crystals in here, and I believe there's some vulcanite in the uh, vulcanite core chunks and possibly uh, vulcanite ore in the chests of shame because I accidentally brought it back with me. So again, that could be loaded into this uh, into this rocket and taken out back out to Taisha Kuten where it can be where it can be uh, it could be processed and then provide us with some. The actual vulcanite that we need. So yes, this allows us to then set up, ha have some things that are d d intended to go out to anywhere. I mean, the Norbit one is possibly a little bit unnecessary because we're probably going because there's there's over here we've uh, over here we've got the general rocket that goes up to Norbit with all of the stuff that's required. So we've got we've already got that sort of shopping list set system set up for this. But this will allow us to do have a separate one for other planets. And potentially we could use that along with the uh, the ghost planet mod in order to have it automatically output all of the bits and pieces that are required for any uh, any partial builds out there before the rocket even even goes. Now that would require us to plan ahead a bit more, but you never know. We might find a way of uh, convincing ourselves that a little bit of planning ahead is a good idea. So the spaceport is being fed all of its uh, rocket parts. I can't find it now. Here it is. It's being fed all its rocket parts d uh, down this long, long belt here, which has been all been uh, linked up to together with uh, red cable, as you can see. And the idea of this is to stop the uh, the rocket parts flowing through here and just completely filling this belt up because rocket parts are expensive, <coughs> and so we don't want to have enormous quantities of, of them on this belt. But also, we're not going to be launching rockets from down here very often. So it doesn't matter if it takes quite a long time for them to trickle all the way down the belt here one at a time and eventually build up a rocket down here. So this should be quite an efficient way of building them up, at least that's the hope. Maybe later we'll start doing it with logistics bots, maybe we won't. We shall see how it goes. <laughs> and you can see along here, as we gradually use up um, supplies in space, you can, so we've used up too, a few too many of these motors, so we need some more. So a flood of them come through, they go into the rocket. And then that that bumps the number up, so you can see now on here we've got um, where are they? Yeah, we've got 230, 230 of these motors available. But gradually, as they get used up in space, you can see that number's going down again, 228, 226, and so on. So as they get used up, that'll gradually go back down again, and and um, and the same with the red circuits as well. As they, as they flood in and eventually that number will drop to negative again and we'll load some more into the rocket and so eventually the rocket will be full and it will in fact it's fairly nearly full already eventually the rocket will fill up and it will depart back off to uh, Norbit with all of these uh, resources in it so that's an aside that's nothing to do with Mike but it's uh, it is a thing that is, is running and I noticed it, I noticed the uh, stuff going through so I thought I'd talk about it He's done some other little sort of tidying type things, like uh, just imp improving things, so going around, so sorting little problems, like upgrading belts over here. So the um, the copper belts, for example, have been upgraded because we didn't have enough throughput for the uh, for the modules that were being made up here. Um, he's put in a new copper mine. Uh, oh, above the pyroflux smeltery, so that's over here somewhere. Yes, yeah, so this new this new copper mine, that's um, a Mike shenanigan apparently. Um, and yes, we uh, we seem to be we seem to have quite a heavy need for copper at the moment. Although that said, this train is just parked at the moment. Ah, and I think I know why this is, and I shall touch on this later. 
Um, but he's made another new copper mine out to the west somewhere, probably this one down here. So it's keeping the resources flowing is an important part of uh, of, what, of what's been going on in the in the last few uh, in the in the last run. Um, because whilst I've been off in space messing around with uh, making production and utility signs, both which are very very valuable, so I think that was a worthwhile thing to do. There have been various little problems cropping up down here on the planet. So um, conveniently, the, the nice thing about multiplayer is while I'm concentrating on one thing, they can go around and concentrate on other problems. Um, and so between us, we make we make much better progress than we would if we were all working one at a time. He's gone in and fixed the problem I was talking about last week, where uh, occasionally Module City would, would uh, kidnap trains. So now, now we've got a balancing system set up here on the um, across these these warehouses, presumably, which is what this. Yeah, we've got all the all these ones here, which are saying. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to ask Mike to explain this in the comments because we've got the uh, these these four pieces of belt hooked up to each other and presumably what's what's supposed to happen here is we should be looking at these and going if 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 um, anything is greater than um or if if, if 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 the total of anything is equal to the total number of items on the uh, on the belts uh so that's what is it eight eight things on a on a belt I, I don't remember but something like that so if the if all of the belts are full then run but no that wouldn't work ah now down here Ah, this is this is probably how it's supposed to be. Yes, yeah, so here we go. This 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 one is actually working properly. So as you see here, this is also linked into the um, into the warehouse, and so we're seeing we're saying if there's less than 500 in the warehouse, then these should run in order to put it in. Goodness knows what the other ones are doing. And then now ah, these ones are saying if it's greater than 100, then run. Right. Yes. Here we go. So this this is this is set, this one is set up properly. The solid fuel is not. Here we are watching for the signal that's coming out of the warehouse, and we're saying if it's if it's uh, less than 500, then run, and that means this will be kept at about 500. And then these ones are saying if the signal is greater than 500, then these should this is greater than 100, then these should run. So if as long as there's anything in a reasonable amount of anything here, then it'll pour out of all four of these e equally. So that that balancer is working. This one up here is missing a red cable, so I could fix it by putting in an additional red cable just from here to here. There you see, there we go. All four of these are now flowing. So we're now putting the uh, solid fuel into here as fast as we can until it gets to 500. Then it basically stops and it's kept at about 500 by the, the, the input and output. So yes, it was just that well, just that one cable that needed to be added. And it turns out I happened to look at the one example of the uh, of station that wasn't working properly. So that's um, kind of lucky, kind of unlucky. I don't know. Depends on where you look at it. But now that's, that's working again. We've got the solid fuel flowing out. So it's now going to be heading back out here. Where, wherever solid fuel goes, which is down here, down here somewhere, to go into making into making the module. So, okay, there we go. So he's made, he's, he's mostly fixed that, but um, but not quite properly. He's also put in the uh, the fueling to the bottom two stations. That was uh, that was just a minor oversight. I I pointed it out in the video because I was going around looking at things, and he's now sorted that. So that's good. And he's added this, an additional station for speed module one. So I wonder where that's gone in because it's kind of oh, it's over here. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we, we so we now have because we're going to need this. We need. We, I discovered we're going to need speed module ones for the next science card. Um, it's this one, the optimization tech card. That is probably going to be the next science pack we do. What are you? Oh, matter science. Interesting. Um, and that takes optimized blah 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 optimization research data, which takes the speed modules. So we're going to need to be start start bringing speed modules up to the um, up to up to up into space in order to make this uh, in, in the space manufacturing to make the uh, the optimization research data to make those those tech cards. So this is going. So yeah, we having needed the productivity and the efficiency modules for the other for the production and utility sciences, it makes a certain amount of sense then that we need the other type of module for the other type of extra science that's being added in here. So yes, he's so he's added in an extra station here, so we can start bringing those up on mass up into space interestingly he says he's put in some um circuitry to stop the red and green circuits flowing right so that's what this is yes these these green cables are watching for um how many uh they're watching for how many um tier three modules have been made i'm going to have to guess that this is not quite finished yet but what this is what this appears to be doing is watching for how many um efficiency module threes are uh, are on the um, on the train system and if there's enough of them, then it's passing a signal through here. If there's enough of all of them, then it's passing a tick up here. And, there, and then that tick will turn off these, these belts. Now, the idea of this, presumably, is to turn off the Tier 3 module factories when they get to the point where we've got lots and lots of the, uh, of the modules available. So, the, uh, so they, therefore, we don't just keep making more and more and more and more Tier 3 modules, which, I mean, that makes sense. It, it means that, essentially, once the stations down here fill up to a decent level, we'll cut off the supply up here. I'm just not quite sure why he's tapped into this cable rather than linked up to the stations down here. It seems a little bit odd. 
And also, these stations down here aren't linked up to that system, so it's not going to work yet. But I'm going to assume that that's a work in progress, and he needs to—he just needs to run a green signal, down, a green cable down here, and hook it up to all of this stuff in a in a way that I'm not 100% um, sure about myself. But I think it involves basically linking up to all of the warehouses. We've definitely been doing that with some of the other provider stations. So if we look at this one, yeah, the, on this this red station here is, is appears to be feeding a. Oh, I don't know. There's there's complicated stuff in the train network, and that's why that's what um, that's why there's red and green cables running along all of these um, line, all these cables down the middle of the uh, the railway lines, and sometimes that links into stations like this. So we can say over here, we know that we've got a certain amount of. Uh, low density structure available. Okay, so there we go. Yes, the green green cable links up to all of these station, all of these warehouses, and then on this on the green cable down here, we know that that we can look at this and we can go, yes, there's 1.3 thousand low density structures available in the system. So therefore, we can use that to decide to allow other stations to decide whether they should be providing more, not providing that sort of thing. But what Mike has done still needs to be hooked up to the uh, to the network over here to the green network. So he needs to link up all of these now all of these stations with with uh, green cables and then tap it into the uh, in, into the green green network up here and then he'll be able to use these to turn on and off when there's appropriate numbers of the uh, of the of the resources available now <clears throat> the the slightly odd thing about the way this is this appears to be working is that he's looking here he's watching to say and saying if if all of them are very if all of them have got lots then turn it off but if only but if we're using say large quantities of red pro of, of productivity module 3s then it's going to, whenever it's making productivity threes, it's also going to be making speed and efficiency threes. So I don't think that's quite how he means to do this. I'm going to have to have talk to, talk to him about it and find out what's supposed to be happening here because I don't think it's quite doing what it's supposed to. What would probably be a better way of doing this would be linking it in up here, either on the input or the one of the inputs or the output. It doesn't, it sort of doesn't matter which. And saying if there's more than n thousand productivity module threes available then cut off this belt or this belt or one of these it doesn't doesn't matter which one because it'll stop it running but as long but cutting off one of these just to stop the production happening because yes yeah, stopping that stopping the production before it gets ridiculous before we get ridiculous numbers of modules is a good idea because they're expensive and it would save a lot of resources but at the moment it doesn't seem to quite be doing what i think he wants it to do He's done some other sort of general assistant stuff, so um, adding in modules in all kinds of places, such as the uh, he he helped with the uh, green circuit production town, which is down here. So moduling up this to a certain extent, um, he he put in yeah help, helped out a bit there. Uh, helped with um, putting in modules into the into the smeltery systems over here, which I'm going to talk about when I come to what Mike's uh, Mark has been doing. And he's also been helping uh, Mark out with the new power system up here. So, one of the big problems, is, as I touched on in the um, at the end of the last at the end of the last video, when I was talking about what I'd been up to, were, and Tristan had been up to, is that we were running very very low on power. So, looking at this, we've got you can see we're kind of okay, but that's because Mark went in and cut off the um, I think it was the was it the copper smeltery? Was it the I there's there's a large area that's been cut off from power anyway. I, once, I thought it was the copper smeltery, but apparently not. Anyway, there there are some areas that have been cut off, so we're um, not not you get not. Oh yes, down here. Ah, yes, down here they've been cut off by turning the belts round through here rather than by removing a pylon. That's interesting. Um, sure. And so yeah, he's cut off. He's cut off all of these smelting systems up here, which means they're now not using very much power. So he's currently using um, five kilowatts instead of 330 plus 120 uh, percent kilowatts. So it's, it's a m massive drop in the amount of power used, but it also means there's a massive reduction in the amount of copper being produced because now it's only being produced by this area, which I shall touch on in a minute. But in order to try and get the um, uh, in order to solve this problem for the future, we've got a massive area over here of more of the power generation systems that's being built up, um, and that's just currently got the the, ro the robots flying around and doing it. Mark's train is up here, so he's probably over here overseeing it, but he's just not connected at the moment because I'm doing a vi update video. And as you can see, the bots are flitting around, building everything up, and eventually this will get tapped into the the water over here. Um, with all of the big pipes and things, we'll get the flood of water in. Everything will kick in. We'll start growing trees, making it into making it into um, biomethanol, and everything will start to work happily. Um, so yes, this is this is currently getting built up. It'll take a little while to get it going, but it does look quite cool when the uh, when you do finally uh, at attach the water to a system like this, and you can see and you can watch the um, all of the greenhouses sort of grow, go greener and, and brighter greens as the water flows gradually through them, and they all pick it up. So that's quite cool. If we if I if I get the opportunity, I'll try and point that out on stream. So yes, this is uh, this is a very large power production area. Um, I'm not sure how it compares to what we've got at the moment. Let's let's find out. So we've got here. We've 
we have about we have 262 um, generators and over in the previous power area that's here we have 406 generators so it's going to be more than an it's going to be more than an additional 50% over what we've got so that that area is about half produces about half the amount of power slightly more than half the amount of power that this area does down here so yeah that's going to be a massive improvement that's going to take us from the 2.2 uh, gigawatts we've got at the moment to about three and a half probably something like that um so yeah that's going to be that's going to be a massive improvement it's going to it's hopefully going to solve all of our power woes for quite a long time <laughs> you can see the wibbly from the um from the solar all the way along here and then actually what's quite interesting is you can see it where it goes flat here which is where i turn, turned on always day for the sake of making the video which is blatantly cheating because look what it does to the solar power you can generate um but for the sake of making a video it's kind of worthwhile <laughs> Finishing off um, Mike's stuff, he's also, he also says he's built a, a security wall in the far northwest. So I imagine that's probably this one here. <laughs> so that's interesting. We've got we've got an artillery area here that's then been built up into a... I think what by security wall he means a notification wall because I think this this is insufficiently defended to um, to tell us when a... Ma to, to defend against a massive attack coming in. But it is at least enough to stop any explorations from, by the biters and to also give us a warning if there's going to be a massive attack and the same oh the same up here as well maybe maybe this is the one he was referring to but anyway these these are both the sort of what i refer to as notification walls because they let you know if something unfortunate is going to happen whereas a wall like this will actually defend against something unfortunate and uh, will will defend against the biters reasonably well and a wall like this will defend even more th effectively because there's like, twice as many turrets although i notice there's no flame turrets along here so um Mark has clearly been going for a going for the, the slightly lesser uh, approach of of just using uh, just using laser turrets and also no robo ports, which is why we've got we've picked up little bits of damage along here to some of the walls and it hasn't then and, the, and nothing's been gone out to repair them yet. So yeah, possibly having and up, upgrading some of these walls to have robo ports on them would be a good idea. Really, it depends how many attacks are going to come in. Now I suspect what happened here was some, was uh, Mark rolled up here with the artillery train and shelled the ever living was name out of all the biters in this 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 whole area and so there's a massive flood of attacks and that's why we've picked up some damage here and he presumably the damage the attacks are still trickling in when he left so they have so he didn't do the repairs himself so probably that we're not going to pick up any damage here because we're not going to get any big attacks because there's no pollution over here we're being very careful to keep the pollution inside the factory so it, maybe it doesn't actually matter but alternatively, we could consider putting in a um, some outpost stations over here to, to, to just to keep everything up and ha up and happy and protected. We'll see what we'll see what seems to be necessary. Oh look, you can see that train leaving pollution as it trundles along the uh, along the railway line here. That's um, interesting and kind of cool and disgusting. And then also because there's trees along here, it's being absorbed from here and cleaned up out of these chunks. That's really quite interesting. I mean, I've never, I've, I've noticed the pollution along the railway lines before, but I've never seen it. I've never actually seen it being dropped by as a train as a train goes through. So that's enough talking about Mike. Um, I don't want him to get a big head or anything. If you are enjoying the stream and I, all the videos and the series in general, and I, I'm guessing you are if you're still here 20 minutes in, then please make sure you've subscribed to the channel. It, uh, it'll help you see any new uh, the next videos as they as they pop up, and uh, it helps it helps the channel grow as well. Because the more subscribers I have, the more likely YouTube is to show my videos to people. So. Um, Mark has been also has been also been doing sort of little things here and there around on the on the planet, uh, so, and I'm not I don't I don't say little in order to um to belittle his his accomplishments accomplishments and achievements because he's doing very important stuff. It's just he's been going through sort of making minor improvement or going through and making improvements in lots of little lots of areas to make to generally improve how the base runs. Like you know keep making sure we've got enough electricity. Little important things like that. So over here, for example, he's put in uh, pro f full productivity. He's got up to prod threes in all of the um, in all, all the pyroflux production, and that's very valuable because at the moment, as as, you, as we've discussed in previous episodes, that we're very very short of vulcanite because the amount of vulcanite being produced on Taishikuten is not enough for what we really want over here. We're we're trying to get through a good couple of hundred a second um, a minute, and we're bringing in 100, or possibly we're trying to get through 400 and bring in 200. I don't remember exactly, but whatever it is, it's not enough, as you can clearly see by the fact this chest is empty. 
So he's done a couple of things here to, to make this better. One is that um, over, over here it used to be, we used to have the, this, this sort of setup, two prods and one speed. And we've now bumped up to uh, three prods and all tier three prods as well. And that gets us, as you can see over on the right hand side, it drops the crafting speed to down, down to 0.4, which is slightly unfortunate, but never mind. But it does boost productivity to 24%. So we're getting an extra 24% pyroflux free, which is great. Now, I think over here, these probably also want to be upgraded to the Tier 3s because these are also being used. Um, oh, no, they're not. I don't know why. I, oh, the, the Pyroflux is just, is just appearing and disappearing in the pipes. That's why. Okay, so yes, it is just these two banks that are being used, and these are the ones that have been upgraded. So that's great. This this is, is working as it should. You can see as, as the, uh, as the um, Vulcanite comes in, it gets gobbled up and used up. And... We get slightly more out than we were before. It's not a huge amount more, but it is a bit more, and the, the, and the, and the more we can boost that by, the better, because it's not coming in as quickly as we would like. He's also tweaked the priorities so that, um, let's see, so here, we're saying go out this way if there's less than 300,000 pyroflux. Down here, we're also saying go out this way if there's more than 100,000 pyroflux. Right, so we're actually doing this based on how much pyroflux we've got, which is, um, in, it, which makes sense, actually. So the idea of this is that, ooh, I was going to say, the idea of this is that all of the, um, the the Vulcanite goes out this way to be turned into Pyroflux, but a little bit just came out here. So that must mean we have about... No, it doesn't mean we have 300 pyroflux, 100 Pyroflux, 100,000 Pyroflux. I don't know why that blooped out there like that. That's That was probably a... I don't know. I don't know what happened there. That's, that's very strange. Uh, the Pyroflux is more important to what we're doing than the Vulcanite is. So we want to prioritise the, uh, the, the the Vulcanite going out this way to be made into Pyroflux so it can then be taken over here and used for the smelting rather than having it taken down here and going into this station where it will be taken away for less important things like making modules which maybe is fairly important, I don't know. Yeah, we've got... A l There's something funny going on here with these numbers. So here we've got 11,000 Pyroflux and this is saying... No, it's Vulcanite, sorry. I don't know, we've got 103,000 Pyroflux. Okay, so we are we are chucking it out in both directions, which means more of it is going to be going to this Vulcanite area than over here. Um, that seems to be weird and problematic, and I don't know... Oh, no, of course, because there are two stations that have, um, have the Pyroflux. There's this one here, and there's the one down here from the core mining. So core mining also generates Pyroflux, and this is running as fast as it possibly can. Um... He says, looking at it and seeing a backlog. Um, in theory, it's running as fast as it possibly can. And it's also spitting out Pyroflux, which comes down here to these tanks, where there's an amount. And between the two of those, and that's because of these green cables tying all the stations together, um, between the two of those, we have more than 100,000 Pyroflux in total. So um, that's good. Uh, it doesn't mean there's enough in either of the stations to, to bring more out. So I'm not quite sure this is ha quite how he intended it to work. But it's, it's sort of working. <clears throat> Now, why are these not running? That's my next question. Oh, they are running. They're just, it's just the animation is running very, very slowly. Because, why are you not running? Outputs are full. So you're full. Ah, yes. Someone did mention this last time. So we have we have too much water here. Um, so the water is supposed to be being vented. There's 25 in that 1,000 in there. This is supposed to run when there's more than 12,000. Oh. <laughs> it's... We have so much excess water that one um, one flare stack is not sufficient to get rid of it. That's interesting. Um, so yes, we are, I think this water is partially being used for something. It's being pumped out of the ground, out of the lake over here. So you'd think that means we, we, we're actually using it somewhere. Um, but I don't know where. I think. Oh, I think it was. We used to be using it for pyro for pyroflux processing and turning it into power. Um, but we've stopped doing that. Oh no, it comes down here to be used for the washing. Right. So down here, we aren't using. Basically, we're not using. The, we're not using the water up fast enough for washing down here. So it's, it's all built up in the tanks up here. We've got too much of it. We need to have a lot more of these flare stacks in order to just ditch the dispose of the unnecessary water and blow it off as vapor into the atmosphere, which is presumably going to need to lead to a lot of rain. So yes, the uh, the system is in theory working, it's just these flare stacks are, are very, very slow. So we could put a speed module in. More likely, we'll put in a, a pipe that just runs across here and have lots and lots of flare stacks running off the running off the same one and see if that pump can then keep up. So, yeah, that's um, that's problematic because it's it, it means basically we're, we're not using up the core fragments as fast as they're being brought, as, as fast as we might otherwise be. Um, now, we haven't had any sort of backlog. Oh, we have. This, is this... How full are you? Oh, no. 
So again, you can see that these are running at slightly different speeds due to the favoritism of the loaders up here. However, in order to make sure that that doesn't matter, we've got balancing going on down here at the bottom, where we're watching all of these, um, all of these belt, all the belts along here, and making sure they only run when there's about the same amount in all of the uh, all all of the um, warehouses down here. Now we could do it the other way around. <clears throat> we could wire in up here and say only load when this this is has less than 80% full or something like that. Um, but we have we haven't done it that way. And it, it doesn't really matter. Either way is equally equally effective. We can we can push it in through whatever whatever method we want. Um, so yes, that means this one is as you can see this one has completely filled up now. So we have a backlog that is gradually building up down here. We need to sort that out because this is useful free resources and we don't want to be wasting it. So we need to get on with that. There's been some working with the trains. Um, I think that involved the um, the drop off trains up here. So now instead of having um, Instead of having this this station here always set to have a train limit of three, it's set to a train limit of the amount it actually requires divided by eight thousand. So here we go. We've got the amount of the amount of iron ore we're short by divided by eight thousand. That tells you how many trains you need to bring this system up to satiation, and then it requests that many trains, which at the moment is one, one more. So once these two have gone through, the system will be completely satiated. Except that it's except the iron ore is of course flowing out in order to turn it into the iron plates and ingots that we actually need elsewhere. So. It's it's a ba it's a balancing process, but now you can see the uh, the tr when this train comes in and unloads, we may see the train limit drop to zero because we are unloading fairly quickly, and it doesn't look like we're getting through the iron ore all that quickly. So we'll keep an eye on this, um, and, and generally the system will make sure that it only summons the right number of trains. So if we came along here and used up suddenly used up all of the iron ore here immediately as by magic, then we'd immediately summon a huge number of trains. But as long as we're just kept reasonably satisfied. This number will sit around 0, 1, 2. Just, it'll just keep the iron ore coming in at the right sort of rate. So that's, yeah, working quite nicely there. Mark has also expanded out to the southwest. So down here, he's yes, he's liberated all of this territory, which is, that's, that's a big area. We're not going to run out of uh, space to build for quite a long time. And as part of that, he's gained three new core miners there, there, and there. Uh, so that's that's good. We've got those, all them being brought into these, um, in, into these standard station systems. Um, and then we can... Take the take them away to be take the core fragments away, and that will help with keeping the uh, keeping the core uh, the, the core mining pro core fragment processing over here up and happy, even when we start even when it starts to run again flat out. Um, yeah, so that's that's one of the big advantages of gaining more territories. You gain more core mining. Uh, core seams where you can build out more core mines and just get more more and more free stuff now i say free it costs quite a lot of power but power is also free so in a way yeah it doesn't matter it's pretty it's still good the next thing he did was this this is this is part of the general modernization there used to be down here there used to be a massive um uh steel smeltery in this area um just taking up all, all, all of this area was was as i say a massive steel area making bringing in iron ore making making iron from it then making steel from it and then spitting it all out down into a station down here that has all gone um and this coal coal station has been disconnected as well because we don't need that coal anymore uh so this is yeah work but this, this has been removed from here over here he's removed the uh, the um the iron mine that was originally in this area it's an iron smeltery that was originally in this area so if we remove the iron smeltery we remove the steel smeltery and that's because it's all being made up here in a far more efficient way as long as we don't run out of vulcanite and, and uh, pyroflux <laughs> so yes because it's being made more efficiently up there that means we don't need the space down here and that's meant that we can now have this area as an additional copper um, processing area, processing and smelting area so we can get a lot more copper being um, pumped through and that's being that's great because we're getting through a lot of circuits at the moment and circuits are very very heavy on the copper use so this allows us to make more copper which allows us to make, yeah so it allows it <clears throat> allows us to make more copper because that's probably an extra 60% on what we had before this was the old copper smelting area this is the uh, the additional one now at some point once we have enough vulcanite we'll also go over to uh, the um, enriched turning enriched copper into molten copper with more pyroflux but at the moment we don't really have enough pyroflux to be doing this so we don't want to we don't want to start uh, using up the using up power flux there. So at the moment we're taking the hit on the copper side because we don't need copper ingots at the moment for anything. So the iron had to be switched over because we needed iron ingots. But copper we can still carry on just playing with plates. Uh, so this can be this can be churned through here. And at the moment it's using it's using the uh, the stuff that comes out of the uh, the core mining process core fragment processing at the moment that's flowing through here being made into copper as you can see. This area has been turned off to save power. I talked about that earlier. That's why we've only got a little dribble of copper coming out and nothing is happy. But once a new power station has been built, this can be turned back on again and we'll start and then we'll get like two and a half times as much copper coming through. And hopefully that'll eventually keep these trains satisfied and all the rest of the rest of the uh, system satisfied. 
because at the moment we're kind of struggling in the copper areas. Part of this removal of the um, of those of those uh, iron smelting areas was that well, the other thing we had to consider was the uh, the iron core iron ore that's coming out from the core fragment processing. So that flows up the belt here, round here goes in over here and is being turned and is now being put into a pickup station i think there's probably some prioritization has been done here but the idea is that this this station will now summon trains over and tell them to come to come and pick the iron ore up from here as well and then where it can be shipped off to the other iron smeltery and i think as i say there's some prioritization being done here probably because this station will say uh, this station will always be turned on if as long as there's enough um, copper of uh, iron ore available. So we're doing the divide it by 8,000. Output that as a train count. So at the moment, train limit is one, so a train can come out here with, for, for, to get to pick up the iron. And I suspect all of the other iron mines will have prioritization systems set up on them. Um, where is there another iron mine? There's one up here. So this one here. No, there's no priorita prioritization set up here, which is interesting. I was expecting this to say if there's more than a certain amount of um, iron available in the in the in the uh, core mining station, then to turn tell the other ones not to summon trains because we don't want we don't want our iron iron ore to be taken from we don't be, well we do want iron ore to be taken from there, but we want to make sure that iron ore gets taken from from here as a priority because if this station completely fills up then eventually the core mining will back up and we'll have problems from that and this is free so we want to use it first so ideally will it with LTN you just set a higher priority on the station and it's done because we're playing without LTN because we're masochists we have to do this in a different and slightly cleverer way um, and I don't think we've actually done that yet so at some point we'll need to set this up so this this station has a higher priority for iron um, looks like he says he's, he has done it um, I'm I'm not sure I understand how it works. We'll have to have to wait for Mark or Tristan to put some comments in. And this is the problem with what we're, the way we're playing this, I guess, is that as the systems get more and more complicated, I can't just glance at them and go, oh yes, I know exactly how this works and, tell, and explain it to you, because they might have gone in and done something more complicated that I, that's a bit harder to get my head around if I, don't, if I don't know what's going on initially. So I kind of need it to be explained to me in the first place. So as a bit of an experiment, I'm going to come down here and remove all of the water from the, um, from, from the uh, core mining uh, outputs over here. We'll see how fast it, how fast stuff flows through. So if I ditch that 1800, 18k of water, then we should see all of these machines around here will then immediately kick into action. And I'm curious to see how much comes out of them. Because we've got them, they're all running a little bit slower than normal. So we've got tier 2 productivity modules in the vault because that's what we can afford at the moment. We haven't got enough of the tier 3s yet, but tier, putting tier 2s in means we, get, we still get an extra 24% of everything out free out of all of these. And now that all of these can hopefully flow and dump out all of the water that's um, available, uh, we, we should, this, this system now should run a bit faster. And you can see there's actually quite a lot of ore coming out of these. Once they all start to run properly, we'll, we'll, ha we'll see the we'll see greater output on from this uh, warehouse here, and greater amounts of ore going through here, and, and, and more output as well. So this should allow us to produce lots and lots of, well, stuff. And hopefully keep keep a lot of the um, a lot of the systems up here satisfied without needing to dig quite as much up out of the ground. Now a train has just left from here, which makes me think maybe the prioritisation is working, um, and I just didn't understand it properly. Who knows? <laughs> we shall have to have a look at that. And, and I say we'll probably get something in the comments, and maybe I'll be able to I'll probably be able to talk about that a bit more in next week's video. That seems to bring us basically to the end. So, um, as, as I say, Mark has also been doing the uh, the power station up here, but I've already talked about that, so I, w I won't I won't go on about it again. Although the bots do seem to have run out of things to do, so I'm um, I'm not sure why they've gone to sleep. Oh, I think it's the lack of power down here. There's some um, there's some pipe, there's there's a, a power connection missing between here and and the area down here by the looks of it. Um, so that will that one once that's been fixed, then they can carry on building and and also build out this way to go and get the water. Uh, so maybe what, what, what do we have? Yeah, we've got some we've got some big pylons in here. So let's see if I if I come along here and I take this and I put one of these in here. Is that in Roboport range? I think it probably is. Yes, here comes here comes a robot to place that one. Um, oh, but we haven't been oh it hasn't been able to build. Ah, I think I see the problem here. The uh, ro the construction these Roboports are presumably in construction mode. Yes, oh no, it's normal mode. In that case, these ro ah these ro these rover ports haven't got the power. So if I put if I put a pylon in there, maybe that'll get maybe that'll do it'll, uh, it'll trip it and then we'll just have have just enough because then this rover port will get charged up. The uh, the robots will oh actually no there ha huh. we need another rover port in about let's put it here. So we put that there. Thank you. 
then yes there we go suddenly suddenly the robots have started to move again they'll put in these um substations down here that has now linked the uh, the roboport area so if i zoom out a bit in map mode and show roboports that is now linked above and the top and bottom areas hopefully um and presumably we've got exactly the same problem up here yes where these roboports are just slightly too far apart so we need another one in about uh, putting it in about here will probably work um, yes, yeah, so now we can actually start building all this out. The roboports along here are definitely frequent enough. But so as you can see now, we get the flood of robots coming out. They'll put down a roboport here at some point, And then we'll, that'll extend the roboport range all the way out here. And all of this should get built up. And down here, we're doing the roboport hopping effect. Uh, with Hopefully. No, we're not because we've run out of roboports. <laughs> okay, well, it was a good, it was a good theory, and it'll need to be fixed properly in the in the stream anyway. So come back, up, come back on Monday where you can see us fix the uh, fixing this problem and many others. Uh, I think we're going to be spending some time doing some tidying up on Monday because there's a lot of we've, we've acquired a lot of what you might call technical debt from just sort of rushing forwards and trying to build things up and then you realise you've run out of power or you don't have enough Vulcanite or there's not enough of this or not enough of that. So there's always a lot, lots of little bits of extra production to do here and there or it's what I was talking about in the last video where I need to deal with a lot of the byproducts of products up in space. I'd also quite like to switch over up in space to, from using, um, bringing steel up to bring steel ingots up because that's going to be a lot cheaper in logistics space because you can fit a lot more steel ingots. You, you can fit a lot more steel plates if you make them from steel ingots in a rocket than you can if you just bring the steel plates up in their, in their normal state. So in here you can see we've got, we've got a lot of steel in here. Um, if, I, if I sort this, yeah you can see I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's about 8,000 steel in here and if we replace that with ingots then it would be it would be a much smaller number and they go a lot further. So that'll be happening on Monday. Um, on Wednesday I should be streaming Dyson Sphere program. Um, that's my other big stream of the, of the, uh, of the week where uh, at the moment I'm um, I'm short of deuterium. I need a massive, massive quantities of that. But otherwise, things are going really, really well. I had a very good stream back on uh, last Wednesday, so maybe check that out or, or watch the video tomorrow that'll summarise it as well. Please check out the channel sponsor. That's trefoil.be. If you go to trefoil.be slash lawrenceplays and use the code lawrenceplays on checkout, then you can get 20% off your hosting, hosting costs for a Factorio or Minecraft or Mindustry or 7 Days to Die server. Um, they're, they're great, so check, yeah, check them out. Um, there's GTA videos coming out every Thursday at the moment, and I seem to actually be making them as fast as they're coming out, so that's that's good. If you want to see them and the Factorio tutorial videos a week early, make sure you're a channel supporter. Um, that means become a YouTube member, a Twitch subscriber, or drop in a donation uh, through Ko-Fi. And the links for all of those are in the video description and the um, and the channel information. You can also join the Discord. Again, link for that in the in the uh, video description. And if you, if you're a member and you come along there, then that's where you get all your membership perks, like sort of uh, like early access to the videos. And also, if you want to join in on, if you want to have your own go at this app at Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 on this very map with exactly the same mods as we're using. If you're a supporter, you can join on the supporter server, which is being run by Trefoil, of course. Um, you can just drop in, play whenever you like. At the moment, they've got they've got out to, from the starting area down here, they've got out to about here. They've got a little bit of a bus started. Um, they're starting to make belts and, and power and that sort of thing. So they're getting on um, on reasonably well, but I think having a few more people to help would be very, very useful for them. So yes, please come along and, and, and join in there, or come along to the Discord just to join in the uh, conversations about the game and about the streams. I think that's everything I want to advertise to you, so yes, I hope you've enjoyed the stream. Make sure, Please make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.